So hello everyone, uh, my name is Fabian, UK Country Manager for Athletes USA. Today I'm joined by Kieran. We go back a long time, uh, Kieran and I, and um, I just wanted to catch up with Kieran, get some of his thoughts regarding America, because he's just finished his four-year scholarship over in uh, Indianapolis, isn't it? Yeah, Indianapolis, Indiana. Yeah, brilliant. And it's very cold out there at the moment. <laughs> so, um I wanted to have a chat with Kieran because we go back a long time, don't we, Kieran? We actually met in Dubai when we were playing amateur football for Dubai Barbarians against Precor. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> go a long time. So, um, that was 10 years ago, sure. It was 10 years ago, wasn't it? Yeah, about, yeah, exactly. It was 10 years ago. Time flies, time flies. So, um, so yeah, we used to play together in Dubai and, uh, um, Kieran signed at Notts County on a scholarship, same way I did, um, and then our paths took a different turn. So, talk to me a little bit about that, Kieran. Uh, what happened when you when you didn't stay on at Notts County? How did the process go going to the US? Yeah, so um, obviously did the tears at the county, um, didn't get a pro, and my original. Um, my first thought was university and that's what I did and I applied for a bunch of different universities in English um, and I got into some um, but then I actually had some friends who went to high school who were then going on to play uh, college football in America um, and it just got me thinking so I did a little bit of research and got into it and I was like well if I'm, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna get a university degree um, why not play football at the same time so obviously uh did some research about the colleges, about different paths you can take over there, and uh, it just sounded like a really good opportunity. So I contacted some people, contacted uh, some people who could help me get across the university over there, and they did. Um, and then played a few showcase games in England, where obviously the uh, university's uh, head coaches can come and watch and then obviously try to recruit you. Um, and I got a, I got quite a few offers from a few different colleges, and uh, ended up going to Butler in Indianapolis. And looking back at it now, well, that was the best choice for me. Um, we had a really good four years, so can't complain about it. And now, uh, just graduated, and uh, love of life over here. So what what did you study? Uh, I studied advertising and marketing. Yeah, and you're actually over in America, America now, working your OPT year, aren't you? Um, yes. So to speak, uh, talk talk to us about a little bit more about that. Years um, and you want to stay on in America after you graduate, uh, you get what's known as an OPT visa. It's called Optional Practice uh, Training Program, uh, and it just—it's essentially a twelve-month visa for you to uh, work or study or do whatever you else you want to do in America for the next twelve months. Um, yeah, so what I elected to do was open my own business, uh, but that's that's a longer story because I had some visa altercations. Um, but yeah, I essentially started my own business. Um, making athletic apparel out of recycled fabric right now. So that's that's what I've been working on every day. Go green, eh? Go green. Save the Go world. Yeah, it's important. Well, it is important, to be fair. Um, important we look after the planet. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, so, yeah, talk to me then about your first your first couple of months when you, obviously, when you got your offer and you, you had to do your SAT, didn't you? How did yeah. you prepare for all that? Yeah, so um, obviously you have to take the SATs if you want to go over. Um, I mean, it's they're not that. As long as you put in the work, the SATs will be fine, and 99% of colleges will accept you for your school if you put in the work and do get a decent school. Um, but what I what I did and what I recommend doing is there's a lot of SAT tutors wherever you are. Um, I recommend just uh, finding one contacting them and getting them to help you prepare for the SATs because they, they know a lot of the ins and outs of it. They know what's going to be on it. They know what's not going to be on it. Um, so it saves you a lot of time um, for an essential passing of the SAT and a guarantee that you'll pass it and that you will get into the, uh, a university in America. So uh, that's what I recommend doing. That's what I did. Uh, helped me a bunch. Um, but if things don't go away, your way the first time in the SAT, you can take it as many times as you want. So, um, yeah, that's what I did. And it was it helped me. Did you pass first time? Pass first time. Uh, there you go, clever lad. Uh, <laughs> so how, was it, how did the education actually differ in, um, 
in the US to what you were used to in the UK or what, how did you imagine it comparing, for example, the UK system? I know you've not been to university here in the UK, right. but um, what would you say how it is in, in America? Was it easy? Was it quite hard? Uh, to be to be quite brutally honest, it, w- it was difficult, um, especially whilst playing football on the side to juggle both academics and uh, football. It was very tedious. Um, I mean, from my high school experience, going to an English-based school and then going to America, it's quite evident that they take their education a lot more seriously in high school than my, my friends or I ever did. Um, but yeah, no, academics is definitely a priority for a lot of people over here and they, they make that known. Um, but yeah, it was difficult, but I mean, it's not impossible. Uh, a lot of my friends who came from England to America said the same thing, but we've all got degrees now at the end of the day. You just got to put in the hard yards. Um, I have seen a lot of people drop out because they can't juggle both, which is unfortunate. But um, if you put in the work, you're going to get the rewards. And now I'm sitting here with a degree, so I can't really complain about anything. Did you get support from the university for that? or? Oh, 1,000%. They will support you. They will give you tutors, especially if you're an, if you're an athlete in university. I don't want to say you get priority for a lot of things, but, but you do. definitely do. <laughs> ten. You do, yeah. Um, but they, they definitely try use all of their resources to try to help you the best they can. Um, I mean, if you're struggling, uh, you can contact 10, 20 different people and that will help you in some sort of way. So, I mean, you're not by yourself by any stretch. Uh, so, I, I mean, I receive a lot of help. Um, mm-hmm. You just you just have to ask for it. You can't be too big not to ask for it. So, that's what I did. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, no, that's you're definitely not by yourself. Sounds good. And if you th- do you feel you've learned quite a lot through what you've done at the university in terms of your, your degree? Um, there, there definitely were some classes that I felt are relevant once you graduate. I mean, there are some classes you have to take just for the sake of it, um, but they're usually not too hard. Mm-hmm. But then there are very relevant classes. I mean, if, if, if you're interested in being an accountant, 90% of your class is going to be relevant to when you graduate or it's, it's, it's just in any field. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, there are definitely relevant classes. You learn a lot. I learned a lot. Um, and there's still stuff I'm using to this day that I learned from college. So it's been very helpful. Yeah. Did you, did you actually decide your major was once you were two years in, or did you know more or less what you wanted to study from the start? Uh, no, actually, I actually switched it from okay. coming into college. Yeah. Um, cause I actually ended up going to university a week after they started because I was pretty late in the recruiting process and everything was just getting done at 100 miles an hour. So um, when you get to college, you have an academic advisor and they help you schedule classes, schedule teachers, whatnot. So I got there. My essentially degree was mapped out without my say um, because I was week late, so they had to do that. Um, okay. But I, I stuck with it for a little bit, try to give it a shot. and then. But a lot of the time people do switch. It's a very common thing. You just realize what you like, what you don't like. Um, and so that's what I ended up doing. I ended up switching to advertising and marketing. Uh, loved it yeah. ever since. So, yeah, don't be afraid to switch. Yeah, because that's a good thing. I, th- I suppose a lot of the you know, kids who go, uh, or students who go to u- university here in the UK, you know, you have to know from the off really what you want to yeah. study. Uh, and if that's not it, then you have to start all over again pretty much, exactly. I would say. So, you know, those ac- ac- that extra time is, can actually really be helpful. You know, some people might see it as, oh, well, you're not doing three or four years in your specific field, but yeah. the amount of people who actually change what they do now with their careers, you know, it's better to have something that you know you want to do longer term than have something yeah. that is is shorter term, you know. Um, that's, the, that's the way I always see it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So talk to me about the football. How how did that compare to, you know, you were playing at a good level at Notts County in the youth team. Um, yeah. Obviously, goalkeepers weren't as good, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> of course not, mate. Of course not. <laughs> um, yeah, no, talk to me about the, the standard. How did that compare? You were at D1 school, weren't you? So Yes. So we, I, was at a, I was at a pretty good D1 school. We finished top 25, I think, three out of the four years I was there. Um, and I was pleasantly surprised by the standard. You, a lot of people have a preconceived notion before you go over. It's like, oh, Americans can't play soccer, yada, yada, yada. But you actually get to D1 and realize, oh, I'm in a team with five other foreigners or from people all over the world, just like yourself, you know, who have the same preconceived notion. So, uh, I mean, I had a guy from Cyprus who played Europa League in my team. Hmm. Um, 
I can say that now that he's graduated. I don't know if that... <laughs> that would have hampered his eligibility, <laughs> definitely. Uh, NCAA violate. I don't know if it was or wasn't. But yeah, no, I mean, you, you get players from Spain, all over Europe, you know, and that kind of stuff. And they believe they're really good. So, um, and it's just, it's like that for the other teams too in, in the top D1 schools. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, no, the standard was at a, was a very high level for a majority of the teams we played. Um, I mean, some of the lower schools, they're not going to be as good. Um, but if you're in a good conference, with your comfort game is always going to be hard because um, if you're if you're at a really good school, you're going to be surrounded by other really good schools, obviously. Um, and they're going to have people who have done the exact same thing that you have. Um, so, yes, there are Americans who are actually very, very good at so- uh, football too. But you're just going to be playing with a lot of Europeans. So there is that factor. How was your training schedule? Uh, yeah, it was pretty rigorous. Um, we would we would train twice a day most days, um, whether it be a gym session in the morning and then training in the afternoon. Um, but I mean, in season, might have been a little bit lighter uh, because of how short the season is and how compact the games are. It does take a toll on your body. Um, but definitely off season, they they will train you really really hard. Um, I felt that I trained more in America than I did whilst I was actually in England. Um, so, and the facilities that they have there are just top quality. I have to say they are phenomenal. The amount of money that these universities all have is uh, just unfathomable and they can just provide you whatever you need, whenever you need it. So yeah, the, the quality, the, the facilities are top notch um, and the training regime is pretty rigorous too. So. Talk to us. Talk to us about some of the facilities, Mike. Like what What did you have on offer there that you didn't have in the UK, for example? Um, yeah, I mean, just the, I I remember uh, quite vividly when I went because I never got to tour my university before I actually went there. I kind of went there sight unseen. Mm-hmm. So when I got there, they just gave me a tour of the, like, all the facilities and whatnot. And I remember the first thing they showed me was the training room, um, where they just have all the physios and whatever and all the equipment there. They just had everything you can think of, underwater treadmill, um, zero gravity treadmill, and they just have 10, 20 physios at your convenience whenever you need them. Um, you can go in there and you can get whatever you need done. If you need to see a doctor, they can get you in that day. If you need an x-ray, they can get you in that day, whatever. Um, and I just remember that being the first thing I saw and just being blown away by it. Um, and then, I mean, soccer facilities are soccer facilities too. There's not much you can do about that. Um, I'm, I'm in the Midwest, so we get uh, quite a bit of snow and whatnot. Uh, we don't actually have an indoor facility. We have to we have to train outside um, a majority of the time, which isn't a problem. I didn't mind it, but a lot of schools do have massive indoor facilities, um, and I've been to some un- outrageous facilities. One being Notre Dame, um, who's in the Midwest as well in Indiana, the same state as me, but they're about. I would say two, three hours north of where I am, and their facilities are just ridiculous. I know Jurgen Klopp went there for his season, and he said it's the best facility he's ever seen. So, I mean, I have to agree with him. They're actually just ridiculous because that school has so much money, but you, 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 it's not uncommon to see at different other schools as well. Did, did you ever have to clear the snow off the 3G like we have to? It not to... <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we, we were fortunate enough not to have to do that, but uh, we were trained in it, though. Yeah, so just to give some context here, when Kieran and I were in the youth team, we had to. Um, we went. We had, there was a game on, wasn't there? And we had to clear a three G pitch with just multiple loads times. of snow. Yeah, multiple times with loads of snow <laughs> on. In you know, I think it was minus degrees. Actually, we were there for about five hours in the freezing cold, clearing went snow. Oh, yeah, different different lifestyle, I suppose. Um, um, and uh, talk to me a little bit more about the experiences that you've lived over over there whilst, you know, not just playing football, but also what have you been able to do outside of university? I mean, yeah, so um, a lot of one, of one of the biggest things for me was that um, a lot of the a lot of the guys on, the, on your team are from all different parts of America. So, I mean, yes, you get to experience a lot of America by traveling, um, playing away games. Um, and you, you get to fly to a bunch of different places, but that's that's not that's soccer side. But like, not including the soccer side, I visited my friends who lived all over across America. 
Um, my roommate freshman year was from Arizona, so I went back to his house uh, in Arizona and got to explore a lot of that. Um, and I thought that was really cool, just how accessible traveling is in America. You get to see all sorts of different things. Um, just uh, it's And it's just so easy to do, which is the greatest part. Um, since I've been here, I've traveled to almost every state just because of, well, soccer and the people I know. Um, and it's it's just it's just fantastic to be able to do that, and you create such a, a strong bond with these guys that you play on the team with. Um, I mean, they're gonna be my friends for life now. Mm. Um, but it's, it's experiences just like that that are more than soccer, and I think that's a great thing to take away from coming to America, at least anyway. Yeah. So, what's your top advice for our, for someone who's currently perhaps thinking about going to the US, but they're not quite sure? What would you say to them? Um, I would say if, if, if an opportunity doesn't arise for you to play in England, I think this is, this is a great opportunity and should be taken. Um, I think you should, I think getting a degree is a priority regardless in this day and age. Um, and if you can get a majority, if not all of it paid for by going to America and playing football at the same time, I just think it's an no brand to be completely honest with you. Mm -hmm. Um, Yes, it is going to be hard with the academics and football uh, intertwined, but I've done my four years, and what I can say is it's honestly worth it, and I would I would go back to freshman year now if I could. So, <laughs> uh, so I, I, I would definitely say the hard work is worth it, um, and it's, at the same time, it's a lot, a lot of fun. Mm. Yes, it's one of those re rewarding experiences, you know, sometimes hard work, combined with fun and just living a great life experience exactly. you know there's, there's nothing better than, than going out there and achieving as well and like you said you oh, absolutely right. there's a great experience to be lived along the way so uh, for any yeah. of those thinking about it you know most of the people in fact everyone i spoke to via interview so far has said it's they wouldn't change it for anything no. um so there you go kieran spoken by experience um Thanks for that, Kieran. Appreciate it. Uh, no problem, mate. Thanks for having me on. No worries. Thank you very much. And if anyone has any questions, please fire them over to me. Um, even maybe Kieran, if <laughs> if he's got enough time now, he's he's yeah, an absolutely. entrepreneur. If anyone has any questions, <laughs> <laughs> then um, yeah, no, I'll be happy to answer anything. And um, hopefully, you found this video useful. Uh, and thanks for tuning in.